Hello, good morning, good afternoon, my friends. We're here with Nicole Meyer from New York. She's a Silos messenger. She's a co-promoter, founder of the Meditation Park House in Bali near New York. And to tell you about the context, in 1981, the, organiz the humanist organization, the Community for the Develop Human Development, invited its, found its founder, Silo, to speak in different parts of the world. That uh, tour was called the 1980 Mission, and it, was, it took place on the, the, the end of 1981. Silo was accompanied by a team, the same team of people who would intervene in the different events, and Nicole was part of this team. In the, the, the next few days, it's been, uh, it's gonna be 40 years since the big event that we had in a uh, beach near Mumbai in India. Why have you decided to uh, celebrate the, the 40 years of that big event in, in, in India? What I'd like to say is that in, incredible that was 40 years ago where we visited many countries, uh, a group of us, a team together with CELO. The message was very clearly about the crisis. But it was unusual because in that moment, many of us did not feel a crisis. Many people, apart from us rather, they they didn't understand exactly and how strong that the crisis was. So 40 years later now, that crisis is upon us. It's upon us in all continents, in all sectors, in all fields, and nobody believes that there's not a crisis. In fact, it's just the opposite. Now the question is, how do we get out of the crisis and is there a future? So what some of us felt that in front of all of the crisis we're feeling today, the words that were spoken in that moment now begin to resonate and they begin to give us a message of what can we do in this moment? And Silo said, it was interesting in that moment, he said, the archer, when he goes to hit his target, if it's a moving target, he doesn't hit where it is, but where it will be. So we feel that that message that was given 40 years ago is actually the message for today. And what did that message say? Can you comment the basic ideas? And in this moment, since uh, from your point of view, they are so uh, up to date. He said some what really are basic clear things. First of all, we the, the motto of the uh, event was called There is Still Future. And in, in all of the events, we talked about very similar things. We talked about inner faith. And he said, inner faith is what's important to avoid destruction. And he said it like this, inner without inner faith, there is fear. Fear produces suffering. Suffering produces violence. Violence produces destruction. Therefore, inner faith prevents destruction. He also said a lot about reconciliation, about the great importance of reconciling with oneself, with one others, and with one's past. So much so that at the very end of the talks, he would ask us to, he would ask people to stand up and ask themselves deeply to reconcile and to stop the blame and to go out and to others. Another very important message was treat others the way you want to be treated. 
And one could say, yeah, but well, everybody says that, right. But if you actually do that, if you actually carry out treating others the way you want to be treated, our world would change overnight. And people's lives would change overnight. So there were many aspects of it. And, and finally, another thing that I think is very important, which they, we spoke a lot about in India, was the issue about faith that people were losing faith in themselves and in others, and that we needed to restore that faith in ourselves, in others, and in life itself. So all of these messages that could be combined in those, those few weeks of, of uh, giving these public rallies, I think are right on for now. I think this is what we really need to do. And we need to restore ourselves in faith and we need to find the kindness and we need to find the inner force and the inner light in order to advance towards a more human world. And therefore, when we went to India, the motto became humanize the earth. dead end individualism. It's like everybody's learned that we're supposed to be out for ourselves and the world's not going to survive like that. In our own lives, we don't survive like that. We need people. And when we have good relations with people, then the future opens up. We have faith that things are well and that we, we care for each other and we care for ourselves in a way. So. In this moment, you can see actually that there is a, a real need that people have, that they are um, wanting to meditate. Meditation now has become a, a normal thing, you know. But the question is that people are looking for that meaning. Okay, in front of this despair, in front of this crisis, where is the meaning? And so we really are trying to promote that there is an internal experience that helps to give us meaning. And there's human actions in the world that give us meaning. And all of that gives us future. It's, it's very exciting actually to see that something is so clear and resonates so strongly with today and that even though it was great for that moment, for this moment, it feels very impactful. And for the future, I think it will continue to be impactful and guide us. It's like basic humanity developing itself, mm -hmm. finding the meaning. ¿Qué día va a ser ese evento? Uh, when is this event going to take place? On Sunday, October 31st, which is coincides with the anniversary of the 40 years that we did the event in Mumbai, which was on November 1st. Um, that event was extraordinary because you don't often get 10,000 people speaking on the on the front of the beach in, uh, in Mumbai, which was what I call it Mumbai. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Now it's called Mumbai, and then it was called Bombay. So um, it was also when Silo went to India, which was really quite extraordinary, he became Indian. It wasn't like somebody from the outside was telling them what to do. It, on the other hand, it was like he had very deep respect for the spiritual reserves of India. And he called India the beating heart of the world. So it's very interesting to see what was said. And we're going to be showing probably some footage that nobody has seen or very few people have seen. Uh, 
Anyway, we will be able to share afterwards that link so, to be able to see that. Uh, on the other hand, this this belongs to a broader context, which is what you've been doing, Nico, as a participant, as a Zillow messenger. Can you tell us uh, what are you promoting? You're promoting this this uh, event, the 31st of October, but what else are you doing in this sense? Yeah, there's two activities, one that has been ongoing for many, several years, which is we are developing the Park of Study and Reflection at Hudson Valley, which is outside of New York. And we are currently in the process of building the meditation hall known as the Sala. So that is coming along and we feel it's an incredible beacon of light in this moment for, for this humanity that is looking for meaning. And this is one possibility that, that we feel is a real gift um, and the other thing that I'm working on, which I'm very excited about, along with the team of people in about 13, 14 countries, um, is a program that we developed called Seven Days of Asking. And it's a program that we discovered it was the asking was developed by CELO, given as a gift at the inauguration of one of the parks in South America in Buenos Aires in 2005. And it's a very simple practice. It's a very profound practice. And, and we discovered that if you do it with many more of the indications that he gave as a seven days process, as something that you go developing, something begins to wait, awaken in your heart. And in this, it's, we call it like the meditation of the heart, the way of the heart. And I think it's very interesting that people make contact with their heart in a new way. So one of the things you, that we explain very simply is that if there's somebody that you love and you tell that person from your head, I love you, which we do oftentimes, you know, when we're calling people and saying goodbye, I love you. And now imagine that same person and you tell them, I love you from your heart. And we have a different, totally different sensation of something that is going out to that person. So that deeper love that we have inside ourselves in our heart can be developed. And one of the ways is also through the asking is to, to find what we truly need, because we don't even ask ourselves that oftentimes, what do I really need in life? And what do other people really need? And we can take the, the beauty and the potential of the heart to direct those intentions and produce well-being and many other things for ourselves and others. So that's a process that we're developing that we do uh, in Zoom, intercontinentally. And the next program is coming up on November 7th. It's um, also going to be available. We're developing a web page that people can do it on their own. So that, that I think is, and it's been very, very uh, helpful for all these things in order to reconcile with others, in order to reconcile with oneself and to find um, new answers and new ways of connecting with the deeper part of ourself. And it's for everybody. That's what I really find that's so helpful and exciting. Let's see if I understood you correctly. Are these meditations to ask for oneself? whatever you need and to ask for others as well is that is that the point and this is based on the original talk that was given Rusilo said ask for yourself ask for others ask to move away from contradiction ask for reconciliation ask for inner unity so we take each one of those things but we divide it up by day 
and ask twice a day. So it becomes something that accumulates. And then we also introduce the thanking as a very important aspect as well, because if you're asking all this, you also have to be thanking. But it's really an experience. And um, uh, for me personally, it's been just marvelous working with people and and finding ways that we can take these incredible tools and make them available to people who are searching for things. And maybe there's a lot of people that like to meditate, but then they try and they, they're told that they have to breathe a certain way or they have to stop thinking and they have to stop their images. All of that can be very difficult and frustrating. But with the asking, it's just the opposite. It's quite simple because you're focusing on something that you need something that you feel inside so your mind goes directed towards that and then things do start happening and so you start creating new things in your life um, Nicole, todo esto, me vas Nicole, all of these you've been you you've been participating in this in humanism and Zillowism for decades now. Why? Um, well, very kind of bluntly, I always looked for meaning in my life or meaning in life because I thought life was a little bit absurd that everybody just goes about doing their things and then they die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's going on here? So this search for meaning has always been there. And the first thing that I actually found after searching, you know, in different ways and different places and different times was what Silo said. And the way he approached um, that theme, you know, how do you convert the non-meaning into meaning? And and the type of uh, direction that he gave with the experience. And so I felt that with all of this, my experience has been helping me, but also what he has um, taught is it's not just an individual thing. It goes out to other people. So sometimes you have this road of, I go to people and then I forget about myself or I forget about myself or I, or I take only take care of myself and I forget about others. So it's in that um, back and forth or one or the other that it didn't seem coherent to me. So in our community, it's for oneself to develop and for others to develop. And all of this goes towards what I would call the real meaning of life which is transcendence and one goes accumulating their actions in life and that's registered as happiness growing happiness and one can feel that there's like a, a difficulty in climbing the mountain but you climb the mountain and you feel that things are are right so it's something that nobody had to convince me of because my own experience took care of that. I would say also that we all have a purpose and to find one's purpose is extremely important and that to find those deep needs is really important and to guide ourselves by those purposes, that purpose and those needs. And that gives us unity. It gives us a center of gravity. It gives us a spirit, helps develop our spirit. So I don't, can't think of anything better to do. <laughs> so much that I want to share that with other people in the best way I can. Okay, I don't know if you want to add something. I understand that this message is directed to any human being. 
uh, besides uh, beliefs, any human being who wants to develop his, their spirit uh, and look for what is beyond, this is valid for anyone, I think. I think, I think I put most of it um, in very short terms <laughs> out there, but um, I, I, I feel that we are in a constant state of development. This is a, always a work in progress. And to, to learn without limits, to help, the, help people overcome their pain and suffering and to love the reality we build. And all of that together is a great gift and can be experienced without belief, as you say. It, you don't need to have a, it's not a religion. And on the other hand, you can belong to any religion. It's like a human, a deep human experience that tells you that things are well when they go together. I don't know if you want to add something and we can uh, call everybody, everyone to gather us on the 31st. To see what happened on that very um, extraordinary day. And it was not only in India, but it was also in Sri Lanka that we went to. Um, it's like, a, for me, a bit of a treasure that was uh, buried and that we have uncovered to reactivate for this moment and to see in our history and i think this is really interesting i mean uh, maybe people who are familiar with Stilo or not we are all volunteers he never charged money for anything it was never about money it was never a business and to see that this trajectory this history where we came from and how it moves today with the same principles that function and that continue to um, bring wisdom and kindness and and uh, future to people it's interesting to find out about that because it might be people really feel that they're really looking for so i invite you to try it out see for yourself Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Nicole. Thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you very much, Juan. Thank you for all the work that you are doing too to help get this very good world out. Actually, there's something I'd, I'd like to say that I felt was very important in, in Madrid that defines this moment. He talked about the road of the yes and the road of the no. And the road of the yes was everything that unites people, that brings people together, that helps people. And the road of the no, of course, is the individualism, the, the cruelty. The, and we are so clearly in that dividing line that people are choosing which direction to take and that's all over the place it's a, it's a great way for me to understand that that people are making those choices right now and we are definitely fighting for the road of the yes and that's the best thing i can say about the overall general direction of things <laughs>